mics on. Hey guys, let me try this again. Welcome to another <laughs> edition of Nicola Lawrence Chess with one and only the great PogChamps commentator, international master Anna Rudolph, who is actually between two major appoint appointments. She is just finished commentating PogChamps and is now doing a St. Louis tournament. Hi Anna, it's very good to see you and tell us about that St. Louis event. Hi, Nicola, and hi, everyone. Thank you so much always for the kind words, Nicola. You always hype it up as if I was some kind of a star, but you're the you star, are star of the show. No, no, no. I, Nicola is the star of the show. If everyone is questioning it, uh, what no. are you on about? But it's true that the, the chess calendar is very busy. So we have just finished Pog Champs this Sunday. Half who won it all. I'm so happy for her. She deserves it. And the next event will be starting already on Friday the St. Louis champion showdown with Hikaru Nakamura competing, Magnus Carlsen in the field, and Gary Kasparov as well. Wow. So it's going to be a beast. It's going to be quite a blast with the beast on the board, yes. Okay, let's first address that whole topic of uh, who is the star of this show. My wife, <laughs> uh, my wife says, uh, said the following. Would you, you know, well, in our first... Uh, one of our first episodes. Please, Anna, uh, allow Anna to talk more. She is the start of the show. And I don't have enough courage to contradict my wife. So, <laughs> so anyway, and so uh, let me put it this way. It's, you know, uh, Anna is very kind, but Anna is start of this show. And if somebody, if there are most of the people who are watching this would be coming if Anna was uh, torturing somebody else instead of me, so. They are also here for you because you are you're much thank respected you. and appreciated in the chess community because oh, you have been helping us you. so much, Nicola. Well, thank you. That's very nice to hear. And just a quick shout out to Twitch. Let's go. How are you doing? It's very good to see you. And, uh, I, you know, I'm actually going to reach out to you. I think you and Kimmy should kind of play uh, one of the open field media matches, but we'll, we'll uh, oh. send you a DMs very soon. So. All right, so uh, today is Tuesday. We are counter-programming the first the CLJ Chess Arena, which is... Uh, yeah, which I'm is, sorry about which that. Which is very yeah. interesting, uh, but that's that's perfectly fine. I, for one, I'm more than happy to see uh, more and more chess tournament, and I'm happy to see CL, uh, CLJ come and ar arrange and sponsor a chess arena. The more sponsor we have, especially from the esports community, the better. Hey, Rodman Ron, my friend, it's very good to see you. Um, and today is obviously a special day. It's accommodating both our schedules and my, uh, uh, you know, my schedule has been a little bit insane. I didn't really want to counter program yesterday, the big match between Morozovic and Haufen. So uh, the next edition of my best losses will be this coming Thursday at eight. And hey, hey Matt Lopez Dagen, it's very good to see you, my friend. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everybody, for being here nice and early. And I believe those of you who were watching yesterday's fight night at Fiona's between Morozovic and Huifan will hopefully like the topic of today's session because Oops. I decided to pick a game from the one and only Hu Yifan. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. Now, here is one question that's somewhat interesting. I asked Chiu, uh, Nemo Nemsko, uh, she, you know, she, uh, you know she's, uh, she's a fellow free streamer and a friend, and she pronounced it Haufen. And, you know, that, you know, I have learned uh, that to pronounce it the way it's spelled. So, one of, yeah. you know, I should have asked, uh, we should have asked uh, her how, how it's supposed to be pronounced yesterday. I neglected to ask Fiona to do that. Anyway, yeah. So, yeah, I think we saw so got, it gotten used to saying who you found that she must be like very used to hearing her own name probably. like that, but probably not the correct pronunciation. You're right. No, I, I honestly don't know. Anyway, I'm actually going to post in my Discord. There is a pretty uh, good discussion about how my name is pronounced. It's basically <laughs> two Nicholas uh, that play for NBA and they... Hey, Alex GM, puno pozdrava i hvala. It's, uh, you know, so I'm going to post that video and post a link on it on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. I think it's very good. Hey, even Chessmaster, it's very good to see you. 
Uh, my last name, incidentally, is pronounced Stoishin, since we're already talking about pronunciation of names. Uh, basically, J in Slavic languages is pronounced as a Y, and mm -hmm. the a second, SH in, a second S in my name is actually an SH. It has a little hatchet in original Serbian. Yeah. And uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to Alex. He's a Serbian uh, chess, chess player who is, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, f well, he's, he's Montenegro, from Montenegro. And let's give him a quick shout out. He, he has just started streaming and he's worthy of our support. All right. So, so much, so much about uh, extraneous matters. I am actually looking forward to see. Uh, how fans of Huey fans uh, games. I am not very familiar with her style. I've watched the game against Morozovic, but I was watching it casually because I was in the middle of a, of a fairly major project for a client. So I'm looking forward to seeing this. Excellent, excellent. I'm I'm happy that you're looking forward to it, and uh, we will not talk that much in advance about the style, but because also it probably has been changing over the time. I decided to pick an old game of Huifan because I don't know how many of the viewers remember, but she was already spotted as a child prodigy. Uh, at a very early age, she was basically playing in the Tata Steel tournament at the age of 13 already, which is not not that common, especially especially just breaking into the chess field all the way from China as a rising female player. Um, I remember her hair clips. She used to wear a lot of hair clips. And uh, yeah, she was very young, but very serious and talented and so hardworking that at, this game is from the year 2008. She wasn't uh, wow. even celebrating her 14th birthday. So that's just just before her birthday in February. So I think she was still 13 years old playing the Tata Steel Group B in Waikanze against a Dutch grandmaster, Jan Smeets. We're going to flip yeah. the board, but sometimes we'll also look at it from White's perspective, but mainly Black, and it's going to be an opening. You love playing against, Nicola. No, no. There is torture. <laughs> hey, Evan Chessmaster, thank you for the bits and thank you for joining us, my dear Sepper, my dear friend. All right, so good. Oh, Bishop G5, okay. All right. So How familiar you are with these lines? I actually, play, I actually play E5 and I've watched Alexandra Bottas play this and uh, um, yeah, okay. Oh, all right, so it's it's... It's fine. I don't play mm -hmm. this. I play, I play a different system. But uh, I, I think I mean, you'll be fine because the ideas are very similar. Yes. Here, the main line is to take, yes. and this is a gambit, basically a pawn sacrifice line. Sure, not yes. not so much a gambit, but a pawn sacrifice line that's also popular among uh, grandmasters too. And and Smith himself played it against Hoi Fan. Here, black can take it take twice on g5, accept the pawn sacrifice, and then go defensive, or uh, there are different options. Huifan chose knight to c6, just not saying I don't I don't care about the pawn. I played this line as black, and, and my go-to move against h4 was always h6, just sure. to go for the same trade and, and then continue with the game. I don't like capturing, the, as much as I like free stuff, I don't like to be attacked at such an early stage. Because that's what comes with the the capture on G five. Right. Everything opens uh, up. I actually just uh, sorry. I just need to sure, grab, sure. to turn yeah. that off. Sorry. Yes. My apologies, guys, about it. It's I normally keep the phone next to my desk, so I forgot to do that now. So. Uh, sorry about that. No worries. Yes. So this looks like a Shatar Alekhin uh, attack, right? With the H4, it's... Yeah. Okay. Um, knight C6, Knight F3. Of course, if, if Black doesn't accept the pawn, it's it's difficult to keep going because that, that trade is still in the air, so you can't keep pushing the H pawn. And, and White also doesn't really want to take on E7 just yet, so he develops the Knight instead. 
Maybe I haven't yet recovered from one thing, and I'm sorry to be rude to interrupt. Yeah. You're telling me that there is a poem that Anna Rudolph, my friend, <laughs> coach, international master, uh, best commentator in the world, would not take? <laughs> there is a poem. Ooh, the age poem. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to clip this, and I'm going to post this on YouTube. <laughs> I know it's insane, but that poem... It's so pricey because all these positions, white gains a lot of initiative. So the H file opens up yeah, no. and also there will be a lot of tempi because the queen has come yeah. out. White will start attacking the queen and, and it's just a very unpleasant position. In my opinion, it, this is the main line, but I don't like it. I don't like playing the pawn capture here. No, I, I see why I don't case, like yeah. It. yeah. All right. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I just had to say. No, no, no. That. That's totally <laughs> understandable. Knight c6, knight f3, knight b6, and now rook h3. I think this is a an understandable move. Okay. The rook lift. Ah, nice. Okay. Um. So white usually brings their rook this way because this trade will happen at some point, and then g7 is a target. Yeah. Black plays f6. Okay. I'm not gonna. I wasn't gonna ask you these in a shop moves because it's still pretty much theory so yeah. we, we're just gonna pick up the the middle game position yeah, i'm trade. i'm familiar with these rook lifts by h3 from the very as from some rather um aggressive variations of karo khan yeah. uh, that i play as white mm -hmm. so yes this is you know although it looks strange is actually quite good in theory so mm -hmm. okay now, who you found wasn't scared at all about that rook lift and uh, a potential attack on the king side, so she just continued with castle king side, which I found really inspiring because I would be a little scared. <laughs> How do you see this king side, Nicola? Okay, first let me say one thing. Hi, Perpuccino, it's very good to see you. And please don't tell Anna, but I kind of agree with Rank Pyro here. He basically said black played the French, of course, white is better. <laughs> don't tell Anna I'm kidding of course um, but uh, so we uh, the question is what white should play in this position right um, yeah we can think about that and also how do you how would you value this position uh, would you white is winning already... okay <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna think like, what do you think this is a bit better for right would you be just happy playing it as a white but consider it complicated uh, this uh, uh, this is a position in which uh, white can probably uh, it's it's comfortable for white but white needs to be careful not to overreach in this position which mm -hmm. in, which is uh, probably fair to say because there are lots of latent problems uh, for uh, for white in this position and uh, there is a little bit of initiative here for white, but that's a very perishable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that I, I would prefer to play white here, but yeah. uh, uh, it's it's a dangerous position. I totally understand uh, your evaluation of the position, and and I agree that castle king side it's a good move. So the evaluation is about unclear. But I would be a little concerned myself because yeah. the, the rook was about to come to g3 anyway. This pawn can be pushed. And it looks like white can easily castle queen side as well, which means that the attack on the king side will be even more brutal. Uh, queen d2 was played because after casting, uh, the bishop on f4 was hanging. Um, I know this is not the type of positions you usually play, but what do you think would be a way to continue here for black? Just to think a little bit also of, of okay, what's so, uh, like. Yeah, that, that's fine. Thank you for the follow of Fontes234. And even Chess Master, what do you mean? How fan inactive? She played an open field media match with <laughs> Morozovic yesterday. She's very yes. active. No, just kidding aside, she's uh, she's focused on her academic career and uh, a few other things. So she, has, she hasn't been playing uh, tournaments and uh, she was. Uh, uh, you know, so she's not as active as she used to be. I don't think she's retired, but she's just not active. Uh, okay, and uh, and I think Sleeping Michigan here is very is uh, spot on. 
Uh, White has a question what to do with a king, uh, you know, castling kings, uh, queen side, I have been told, is not a good idea in French generally. However, here this is a very strange uh, French with C pawn being still on C7. So that's not unusual. That's actually castling queen side is a perfectly valid option. Um, You're very popular today. Uh, that's fine. That's that's my phone. Uh, my phone is designed to ring. This is nothing unusual. Um, so the question here is, I mean, let me say this. Uh, White has the initiative. White has the space. Uh, there is a good question what to do with a C8 bishop. White even has development advantage. Mm -hmm. But all of that is perishable or, or hanging by a thread. You know, mm -hmm. this bishop is defending by this queen. This pawn is yeah. defended by the queen. This rook is actually very good, but this uh, rook ne you know, is right now defending this pawn, which may or may not come into play. This mm -hmm. rook, black rook, is on this, on the f2 pawn. Uh, the one pawn structure weakness for black on e6 is really not into play. Uh, this knight is eagerly awaiting moment to jump on c4, which obviously can't happen immediately. This, uh, you know, this knight can attack two potential stuff. It's finding a right plan for white here is an interesting question. Like mm -hmm. maybe play play something like this, castle queen side, and so on and so forth. It's you know. Yeah, Sleeping Michigan is saying knight a5. Yeah, that's interesting. That's probably true. But I can see how black can start attacking very quickly. Like and mm -hmm. knight a5, c5, knight c4. Does white play b3, opening the c file? We're switching into some version of Sicilian. And the uh, white pieces are kind of a little bit tied up. So, uh -huh. you know. So that's the assessment. Would that be your move then, knight a5, or would you consider other moves here? Oh, we are making a move for black? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, hmm, good question. Actually, that's a perfectly legitimate plan, knight a5. Mm -hmm. uh, um, We can all, I think we don't have any direct threats. We probably do not want to take, um, I mean, we can take on e5, but I'm not sure I like that move. Uh, though this knight is pretty much a monster. Mm -hmm. Something, you know, something a line of takes, and then if it takes with the bishop, play, take play b, uh, knight, uh, bishop b6 to neutralize the bishop. Mm -hmm. uh, this may come into play. This may come into play. I have a bias over exchanging pieces. So. Uh, you know, that knight on e5 is very strong. I would probably exchange it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good thinking. And it's not just your bias toward exchanging, but looking at that knight on e5, it, the best piece in this position, the strongest. Yeah. So it's a good idea to get rid of it. Yeah. And that's not how you found played indeed. After bishop takes, what do we do next? Hey Manu, it's very good to see you. And hi Danny and Melvin. Uh, Melvin is suggesting that there is a bishop d7, bishop e8. I think that's uh, actually a perfectly fine move. Mm -hmm. It's just I think taking on e5 is probably best. Yeah. So what we can do here is we can uh, we can actually try to take on put 
put the bishop on f6. Uh -huh. So that's one option. Another option is to maybe play, uh, you know, c5, which is a normal, I'm not sure how strong it is in this position. Um, yeah, I would play bishop f6 here. Mm -hmm. Bishop f6 is one of the best continuations here. And the other one that Hui Fan played is a very similar idea about using a different piece to get rid of the bishop. Because once we have traded on e5, now this bishop is annoying too, and rook g3 is coming. So bishop f6 is a great choice. And knight d7 is the other one. Looks a bit illogical that she or she played knight yeah, d7, then went sense. to b6, and now she's back. But the position has changed, and uh, in the end, she just wants to take and in this case she would keep the bishop on the board so she chose to keep the bishop and trade the knight yeah it makes perfect sense yeah yeah, yeah i see that okay so this was what was played in the game right yes yeah good now if you were to play this as white what would you do after 97 do you let that trade happen or do you try to prevent it now that's actually a tough question Okay. Well, that bishop is fairly strong. It's definitely stronger than that knight. The question mm -hmm. here is what to do with it. I mean, if I want to solidify the position completely, uh, I would, you know, the problem is that, yeah, I mean, the rook belongs to g3 so bishop going on g3 is not doing us any good mm -hmm. um so it's like bishop f4 i'm not sure a bishop you know bishop h2 is a little bit interesting mm -hmm. but on some level i think uh, this uh, bishop belongs attacking on the king's king side yes so i, th I think could just go back to f4 mm -hmm. yep that's what Young Smith played indeed. Keeping this bishop on the board is, is crucial. Definitely. Bishop f4, and now let's continue from Black's perspective. So the trade cannot happen. We have already played knight d7. What's next? Okay. So that knight on d7 is weird. Mm -hmm. But we can play we can play c5. Mm -hmm. We can play knight f6. Sorry, not c4, but c5. <laughs> yeah, c5, knight f6. Uh, Drunk Pyro is saying uh, bishop uh, take on h4. I am still scared to do it. Drunk Pyro, to be honest with you, that kind of opens up the position. Um, yeah, I, I honestly, I think that h4 pawn is actually a, a very good defender for black. So... Oh, I'm sorry. Bishop on n5. Oh, oh okay. Sorry. Well, what's that? Sorry. Oh, I don't know that annotation. I need help. <laughs> Bishop on a... Okay, so n5 is for black. Oh, Bishop, that would... Bishop b4. Yes. Sorry. Sorry, Drag Pyro. Oh. I'm actually very familiar okay. with, the, uh, with the notation. I'm just not practiced enough. So, my bad. So, Bishop b4. Okay, that kind of works. Mm -hmm. The okay, so that's that's actually a perfectly legitimate move. Though very frankly, that bishop is kind of holding black position together, and that knight on c3 is not very much of the active piece. Hey, and Chicken Morales, it's very good to see you, my friend. Thank you for thank you for coming, stopping by. It's uh, good to see you. All right, so I mean, do we have a tactical motive of playing e5 here? Do we want to go? What would be your thinking after e5? Well, we can't do it now because it's, he can take on d5, and it's the pawn, pawn on d5 is undefended. The idea is to utilize the fact that bishop on c8 is hitting the rook on h3. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure. I'm 
on and i think it's premature to play that yeah true but it's good that you're thinking of that diagonal because that could be a motif yeah so the question here is do we do we play c5 in this position or do we mm -hmm. opt to be safe and play knight f6 um and bishop b4 is a legitimate candidate to move though i probably want to keep that bishop i mean if i'm playing i'm gonna play c5 uh-huh uh if I'm playing an adoption match and draw is good enough for me, I'm playing. Uh, I'm gonna play knight f6. Mm -hmm. So that's. I like those options. Those are some of the best moves. Uh, c5 is the is the most aggressive for black. So it's the the more ambitious. As you said, if if you need to play c5, yeah, that that is the best choice here for black. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Logis, then for continuing the gift sub. Yeah, so c5 is a natural move. I think that I'm pretty sure that's what uh, uh, Hoffman played. Mm -hmm. And okay. after c5, now let's turn the tables again, since you are familiar with these positions from White's perspective more. What would be your thinking? What do you need to do here? Would you take? Would you just ignore it? I don't want to take it and activate three pieces. Mm -hmm. Because if I take a knight goes on c5, then all of a sudden that knight is a little bit of a monster. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very active on c5. Oops. Um, which I pre you know, and then all of a sudden this diagonal is open. Mm -hmm. And, you know, white even has an option of uh, taking with maybe with a bishop and pushing e5. So no, I'm not. I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. So what do I do instead? All right, I can borrow a motive from Jubava London and play knight b5, and this with an idea to park my knight on c7. Mm -hmm. Okay, in which case, if it goes here, it attacks this pawn, and it's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. So that's that's move number one to consider. Move number two is to basically say good luck with that thing. <laughs> yeah, Melvin, you're it's it's risky, but uh, you know. Uh, but it, on that particular sequence, if we play this, I can then take on e six, and then I'm. Yeah, it becomes very tricky. In other words, knight b5, a6, knight c7, rook a7, knight e6. Eh, anyway, it's it's not uninteresting. Mm -hmm. uh, if, um, you know, I can even castle, which is ultimately what I probably want to do in this position. Uh, you know what, if if I'm playing, I'm probably going to play knight b5. Knight b5. Okay, yeah. let's think of that, that position a bit longer then. Um, yeah. Knight b5, and you're saying that if a6? Uh, I mean, I am committed to going to c7. Mm -hmm. Knight c7. And after knight c7, what do you think black should do? Let's take a look at that position. Tough foot interesting question all right so i play knight c7 uh-huh all right so i i'm played this right mm -hmm. okay hey mass refuge my friend thank you for the thank you for the subscribing for for three months my friend thank you okay so what does what does i mean the e6 is under attack and the rook is under attack. Yeah. And this uh, sounds like one of those times when I actually missing a tactical strike here. <laughs> what am I missing? I don't know. All right. So can uh, if sh if uh, black plays e five. Yeah, Melvin, you're right. E5 is the 
interesting move. Now what? Okay. And Anna is the worst poker player in the history <laughs> of the universe. It's rather, rather obvious as... Uh, as uh, Rodman Ron is saying, she does know. Yes, she does. She has he, she had this on on the board before, so she's now she's. I'm being tortured here. So what happens? So e5. I take. I hop on e6. And where is that queen going? Hmm. All right, I'm missing something. What am I missing? And this looks like winning for white, but uh, all right, so I'm threatening to take the rook. Mm -hmm. e so you're saying e5 here? Uh, that's the line you were calculating. That's one option. Another option mm -hmm. is to do something along the lines of taking on f4. Mm -hmm. And then maybe we can take on f4. And, uh, hmm. and then play e5. What's the difference? The difference is that I can't take on e6 because then uh, then I'm doing a botus gambit. Yeah, so what right. Nicola is saying that yeah. if you take on f4 first, the exchange sacrifice after queen takes e5, the queen is hanging on f4, so knight e6 is not as strong. Although both queens will be hanging, but one is captured by a pawn and the other will, will then be captured to the knight on d8 will be taken. That's actually a very nice tactic that's, that yours truly would have missed. Okay. Fair enough. You did find it afterwards. You did find it. Yeah, after, after playing it and being in a dead <laughs> position. Story of my life. Okay. All now, right. interestingly enough, we are not even done. <laughs> after oh, we are not done. <laughs> A6, instead of knight C7, why does have a better option? It does. What, d6? I don't know. Okay, I think I know what you have in mind. Bishop c7. Because then the queen has to go to e8. Mm -hmm. And then we can... Okay, and then, then we play knight d6. Uh-huh. Knight d6. And then and... where is the queen going is an interesting question. It has... It will, it, so we are forcing the exchange of the, that dark squared bishop for that knight. And then we can pick the pawn on c5. Yeah, so black shouldn't really take. But as you said, the queen doesn't have many squares. It's queen g6 or queen h5. Queen h5 possibly is the best, so that it at least doesn't step into the g5 or bishop d3s. But still, that position, if we play out those moves on the board yeah. that you have mentioned, Nicola. Yeah, of course. Bishop c7, this, this, and this. Oof. Okay. Boy, this is, this is one messy position mm -hmm. okay well I, i'm supposed to like messy um <laughs> so where's the yeah queen h5 prevents castle queen side too so that's that's another pro for this move at least but where is that queen going after bishop e2 good point it has to go to g6 i'm guessing okay and then uh all right, so bishop e2, g6. I can even do bishop d3. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, there perhaps black still has a chance to take on g2. It looks very scary, but at least white hasn't castled yet. 
Yeah, but instead of playing bishop d3, I can play also rook g3. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, white has the upper hand for sure in this position, and there are a couple of options. Yeah. White just needs to make sure that there's no counterattack by grabbing these pawns. So interestingly, after bishop e2, black has prevented at least castle queenside because the f2 pawn would be hanging in case in case you castle queenside. So difference with having the bishop elsewhere. As if we were to play after knight d6, black had the option also to play queen g6 immediately, but then neither the g2 pawn is hanging nor the f2 pawn will be hanging if, if I just castles queen side. And what's just uh, just for my indulgence? Yeah? If we this. Oh, yeah, but then rook is hanging. No, I was. Actually, it's not. So bishop d3, rook g2, rook g3, and the queen is trapped. You mean in this position? Yes. Bishop d3, queen g2, rook g3. Uh, are you sure the queen is trapped? I'm not. It would be... Oh yeah, it has rook h1, so we can't play it the by bad. Yeah, queen h1 is possible indeed. Alright, so... Okay, so we can't do that, but we can play rook g3 immediately, yeah. right? Exactly, and white has the initiative. Like it's it's not a straightforward uh, winning line, but white definitely is doing all right. So this this line is good for white. Knight b5. Um, the only issue is that, of course, you need to calculate a6 because it's that's a forcing line. Yeah. But black can also consider other options and should consider other options. So. After knight b5, let's think of it again from black's perspective. What other moves would you consider for black? Just before that, one thing. Logistan, you have just made Drunk Pyromaniac the happiest man alive. He just found <laughs> one more person that's using the descriptive notation. So thank you so much. <laughs> Drunk Pyro is a dear friend and founder in this channel. <laughs> All right, so are we still... Um, so I think, uh, very frankly, that, that bishop... Uh, that knight b5 thing might be too pushy yeah and so i presume that's why it wasn't played it wasn't played but the move that was played wasn't that much better what's what's interesting about knight b5 is that if black continues with just a simple knight of six mm -hmm. the computer likes this a lot for black already and th there was no mistake or or blunder from White's perspective, but somehow it's just saying that the knight on b5 is not doing anything because if you were to play knight c7, um, then there's an intermediate move knight e4. This knight yeah. is a beast on e4. And after the queen moves, but the, there aren't too many options because if knight e4, let's say, Queen d3. And there is that rook um, f4, bishop d6 thing. Exactly. The the bishop yeah. is hanging. So since the queen is uh, protecting the bishop, you only have queen e3 or queen c1, which uh, neither of them are really ideal. Knight, um, knight e4, queen e3 would be the most natural, but then c takes d4, attacks the queen again, and, and makes sure ah, that... Ah, that's even worse. Yeah. That's so, even worse. It's, it's just interesting how that move, knight b5, isn't a blunder, but it only it only helps black to get the initiative in this position, to take the initiative, because knight e4 will be so much stronger. That, that square was protected by the knight on c3, so that's one drawback of having the knight on b5. And the other is that the queen is now uh, having to constantly protect the f4 bishop, um, of course, we don't have to play knight c7 here as white, but that would also mean that maybe the best move is to go back to c3 with the knight or, yeah, or do something about knight e4. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I see that. Honestly, just uh, the. Let me, let me just say one thing. So I even think that this. The, sorry. I think even yep. this sequence is, you know. And then wherever here, and then we take, and then we play bishop d6. Uh huh. That's already bad for white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
that's already bad for that's that's already good enough to this uh, and taking on d4 is just true but it's very instructive because knight b5 is such a straightforward move and it looks like white should be attacking but after a natural move like knight f6 suddenly the tables turn and white has to defend yeah all right. Uh, for the record, uh, this is how I, how I lose games on one of those sub Sundays when I play against a man or a, or a grandmaster. You don't make a single mistake, and all of a sudden you're in a completely messed up position. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's cruel, but it's cruel. Uh, yes. It's cruel. <laughs> it... Totally. Okay. So knight b five was not played, um, but perhaps the best for white would have been castle queen side yeah. which which is natural but at the same time there are many lines in the french defense where you should take first on c5 because if you don't take before you castle then black can push c4 yeah. and then follow up with b5 b4 even if you can take the b5 pawn oftentimes it's worth it for black because it opens up the b file yep I still remember so, playing a game against Grandmaster Ilya Nizhnik and uh, uh -huh. he played French and I cast a king si a queen side, uh, obviously much rather different position. And I got uh, a very instructive lesson in, and this is a quote for him, that white should really avoid castling <laughs> queen side. Now it's very concrete in French. So yeah, yes. I, I see that. Okay. Yeah, so I would have I would have been happy here um, playing this from Black's perspective yeah. if I can get C4. That's why the Grandmaster playing with the white pieces, Jan Smits took on C5 first. Mm -hmm. The engine doesn't like it that much. It says, well, it says this as if Castle Queen side was better, but maybe, maybe I just should have left it longer thinking on it. I think it's natural to take first and then Castle because I, I think after C4, Black's play is so straightforward so i think this is the human move to take and then doesn't matter how black takes back on c5 you will then want to castle knight takes c5 was played and uh castle queen side would be natural but he played first bishop to e3 how would you continue here as black sure. hey hedgehog knight this is the free thank you so much for thank you for joining the stream it's very good to see you here my friend so um Yeah, just one side note about engine evaluation. Uh, you see that uh, position after c4 almost feels like uh, uh, other side of the board, King's Indian. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, everybody, I mean, I, I'm routinely am, am amazed and amused how uh, engines routinely under uh, undervalue those positions. So I'm not surprised sure. uh, completely. Hey, Reagan001, thank you for joining us. Uh, and, okay, so um, I'm back to being, I'm back to being white here, right? Or no, I'm yes. black again, after bishop e3, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so... E5 would be an interesting motive, but that kind of, there is a check involved, and then bishop on E7 is undefended. So we can't play uh -huh. E5. True. Okay, too bad. Um, it would be nice to play bishop F6, but that would blunder a knight. Um, we can decide that we finally want to bring that bishop into action and play bishop d7. Uh -huh. Preparing some b5, because I think it's pretty obvious at this point that white is going to castle queen side. So, some sort of a plan that involves moving bishop over here might be interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can play a6 with a plan to be play b5. OK. 
Okay. Heck, we can. We can try to play b5 and gift that pawn for the open b file. Mm -hmm. Along the lines from. Okay. Uh, yeah, Melvin, I think I agree with you. I think a6, b5 is a, is a natural plan. Another natural plan is to play bishop d7. Um, e5, e5 actually fails because if we then white takes on d5 with a check, and then if the queens are exchanged and he takes here, this bishop is undefended. So we don't have, you know, we don't have time to take the rook on h3. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, it doesn't work right now. All right, so I, I think h6, b5 is a perfectly natural move. I think I would play that. It is, it is, most certainly. What's interesting about this position is that as greedy as engines are, here, when I was analyzing this position, I was surprised that some of the top moves, or the number one, I, I believe it was actually the number one move of the engine, was b5 immediately. Okay. So what what is the reasoning behind it? What do you think, Nicola? White hasn't even castled yet, and black is already sacrificing a pawn on the queen side. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's like a kind of uh, Benko idea. Let's, uh, you know, it's 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 perfect. I, I kind of feel perfectly natural. Mm -hmm. um, oops. And what would be the move by move justification, or at least the follow up, if white takes? Let's say with the knight, what happens and what happens if white takes if, with the bishop? Uh, as Drunk Pyro indicated, if uh, if he takes with the knight, then we can play bishop a6 or we can play e5. Oh, because uh, the knight will not be attacking anymore. Yes, the so pawn. then mm -hmm. that's actually a legitimate threat. And then after we push, push e5, d4, um, it's a little bit of a problem. So if I don't think white can take with a knight. Mm -hmm. Very true, very true. First, too many reasons. E5, knight, e4 are both possible because yeah. of the knight leaving. So bishop takes b5. Okay. All right, so what do we do here? Mm. Okay, we can... Okay, so what we do here? What do we do here? Hmm. I mean, we can play rook b8. It's a perfectly natural move. It is. Which is fine. Mm -hmm. We are threatening a6 and to take on b2 and to bust white rather badly. Um, Rook b8 is the best move. Very good job. Yeah, that's that's kind of that's the only move that kind of makes sense. Yeah, and it's a concrete. Even threat. though white hasn't castled yet, it doesn't really have options. You can stay with the king on e1, you can move it to f1 or castle queen side. <laughs> Those are the three options. Okay. Uh, to be very frank, Anna, I don't think I would actually take on b5. Mm -hmm. But at least the black has won a tempo because black managed to play b5 without pushing a6. Fair enough. Okay. No, that it makes perfect sense. Um, okay, so is this what was played in the game? Um, I wish. Re rhetorical <laughs> question. <laughs> of course it was not. 
but it would have been the best after bishop e3 uh who if i simply continued with the the natural bishop d7 you mentioned this idea and yep. it's totally normal i i would have played this move for sure without much thinking because that's a developing move you're about to play b5 regardless yeah okay. white castles queen side what's next Okay, so <laughs> thank you exactly, <laughs> Rodman. Rodman, Ron. That's okay. I'm just gonna make one very quick observation. All right, so now actually this e5 is back back on the list of threats. Actually, uh -huh. it's not because it takes with a takes on d5 with a check. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay um we can play b5 now uh, we can play queen h king h8 and then we are threatening e5 legitimately mm -hmm. um but now okay I don't see another move that's better than either one of these two. I think b5 is probably, you know, and uh, we can also play something along the lines of bishop f6. Uh huh. So, what would be your instinct telling you here how to continue? It's. Uh, well, my instinct is saying play b5. Mm -hmm. uh, whether Haufen play that, that's a separate question. She she looks like a solid player based on what I've seen. Uh -huh. So she's not likely to go into any sort of a wide line. I mean, bishop f6 is a perfectly... Well, bishop f6 blunders the knight. What's wrong with me? Okay. That doesn't work. I want I want to play that bishop f6 for the past five moves. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's play b5. Okay. Now that we have played b5, let's refute b5. Okay. So... <laughs> Uh, Question to everybody, of course. I'm not gonna let only Nicola struggle here. So, after b5, what's the best for white? Yeah, the problem with b5 in this situation is that okay, so we take on b5 and we take with a bishop. The problem is that now pawn on b2 is defended, and Can we take with a knight as white for a change? Hmm. No, I think taking with a bishop is better. So it takes and then the, the problem here is that all of a sudden because of rook d1, this quite a lot of variations do not work anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so we're just going to take, right? We can take it with a bishop and take, okay. takes, and then rook b8. And we can. We can't return the div. Well, we, there is no rook b8. We can take on c5. We exchange on z5, bring the knight back to d4. And there is no attack, and we're up a pawn. Yeah, it's true that white can take the pawn here under better circumstances. And uh, what you said, just trade and then um, bring the knight back. So whether to take or bring the knight back immediately are the two options. Yeah, the problem is that this bishop 
is attacking this. Yeah. Okay, so we can't really do that. Okay. So we need to go back here. Uh huh. And we're up a pawn, and I don't see much of an attack for black. Yeah, this this by engine evaluation would be better for white. In practice, I would be hoping as black that there will be some compositions. I I don't think this is that clear of an advantage because in practice there are chances here for some kind of an initiative, but there's nothing direct. That is true. What's surprising about b5, so yeah, white can, sorry, after after bishop d7 and castle in this line, mm -hmm. what's surprising about b5 is that, first of all, white can take it on, under better terms, so that's an option. And another one is a tactical motive about this pawn and the possibility of a double ah, yeah, attack. Yeah, yeah. So how do we do before. that? Yeah, no, that's... that's... Sorry, that, How do we do that? Yeah, that should have been obvious, my bad. No, no, it's not that clear. It's actually How not do you that execute Hold it? On. <laughs> there is a bishop e6. Hold on. All right, so knight d5 takes on d5, queen d5. And I have to play bishop e6. Mm -hmm. Okay, because if I don't play bishop e6, it takes, takes takes on d7, and that's much better now. Uh, but I can take on c5 first, uh -huh. and then take on d5, where bishop e6 is not an option. Right? So let's calculate that line blindfold. Okay. Bishop takes, bishop takes. Bishop takes, bishop takes, knight takes. takes. And if I if I were to take on d5, then queen takes d5, and that's the line that white wants, right? Yes. So what other options does black have after knight takes d5? Good question. Uh, okay. Ah, it has this thing. Right. Yep. And then what do we do? Then we're not winning. Uh, I mean, we're not winning a pawn anymore. And this is actually pretty bad for white. Hmm. So how can we execute that idea of knight takes d5? All right, so we can't just go in and just take on d5 because bishop e6 and that doesn't work. Okay. Right. I'm, so basically I'm looking at the line that takes, takes, takes bishop e6. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. And I don't have... I don't have the whole thing. Um, and if we take here, takes, takes, and then instead of taking, we're going to play rook f2. Right. So neither of these orders are working. Well, we are, we are trying to find a way to, in which it would work. How can we still try? What other options are there? Okay, so I am um, well. That's uh, Arkatosan. That's what we did. We took the c five and then we took the pawn. But then at the end of uh, you know, instead of taking on d five, Black has you know this. Uh huh. Um. All right, so what we can do is we need to take on d5 first. 
Okay, and, and then? Then after d5, instead of taking with a queen, we take on c5. And we're attacking the rook, and the, this rook is under attack, but it's a rook for the rook. So the line would be, if you play it out on the board... Okay, the round would be, you know, take here, take, yeah. take. And that, okay. works. and that works, right? Well, let's see. <laughs> let's see if you can convince me. Let's see. So, the options for black here are... The option is to take the bishop or take this. Yeah. Okay. What happens in each case? All right. If it... I'm sorry, guys, about my phone's ringing. All right, so takes on c5, it's straightforward. We take here, and then, you know, we take on d7. True. So this is what white wants. That's what, what white wants, so that's not the critical line. The critical line is to take here. Yes. All right. Now what? Now we're basically, we have sacrificed an exchange. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is under threat. Hey, Chess Vidovi, it's very good to see you here. All right. So I'm missing something yet again. All right, what am I missing? <laughs> What do you think of this position? Is there still something for white, or this is this is just not the one? That this we looks like for? a dead end to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, we can take on we can exchange on d five, but then um, you know we can take on e seven, and we can take on h three. We're gonna have well, we're gonna have two pawns and a bishop for a rook, so we are not. But those, it's not very appealing. Mm -hmm. So what are we missing, Anna? Here, let me think for a second. It's not that obvious. So we we have the idea. We want to take on d five and then win the piece on c five or d seven something. We need to make sure how this can be executed, but it's neither of these move orders were leading to the position we want as white okay hmm. hey Tioga, Tiogantes, my friend it's very good to see you thank you for joining us all right so we are missing something what are we missing here oh yes Tio, i need to hydrate thank you Well, the motive is this stupid rook on h3. Right. Yeah. So we need to get it out of the line of fire. Mm -hmm. I mean, this knight is... So let's assume we enter intercede the move and say play well we can't play bishop yeah the stupid pawn is being here mm -hmm. huh all right so what if we do this and just bear with me and okay black, our idea is black takes then we take yeah and then this baby is uh, hanging at the end of the story okay so um, All right, so if rook takes, I'm trying to follow rook the takes. line. Yeah. And then we... Can we forget? We can't really forget about the rook. That's the problem. Forget yeah, if, if only white could play two moves at the same time. I know. Same the, the pesky, the pesky <laughs> if, only, <laughs> if only. <laughs> now... Uh, all uh, these are interesting ideas, but there's there's a move here in this position that 
doesn't really come to mind because normally it's not a good move. But because oh, of the 965 no, lines... Uh, yeah, we can pay b4. Is that what you have in mind? Yes. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> the, the move I love. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about it, Nicola? And it's... how come you didn't say it immediately? Why did you not find me for after two seconds? Because, uh, well, I, I'm putting <laughs> this way. If my tactical vision was as good as it should be, I would be a much stronger player. But and it's it's you're right. It's less than obvious. B four, but it's a move according to my taste. Basically, um, I don't want to say this, uh, and don't quote me, but the fact that it makes Anna cr cringe, it's actually a plus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, B4 is definitely B4. not a move I would want to play, <laughs> but here it works. It works here. So the point is, the point is, <laughs> Nicola, <laughs> let's explain what happens there. The point is then... Um, the, then basically the bishop on d7 is undefended. Yes, that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And unfortunately, this was the same the same idea with the natural bishop takes c5 was the yeah. same idea. But unfortunately for white, this activates the bishop. Yes. And after knight takes d5, rook takes f2, black is all right. So as ugly as it is, the correct move is b4 chase the knight away and after b4 doesn't matter where the knight goes or maybe knight a6 or something is the most uh, like at least putting up some fight but this position is, is just okay. bad this is exactly what white wants okay thanks steel for the sub that's very greatly appreciated my friend yep okay <laughs> i like this game thank you anna <laughs> <laughs> I and Pretty I is right that Bishop takes b5. The move that you mentioned, Nicola, was a simpler one, but this one grabs more material and eventually there's not as much attack for black, even though we have pushed b4. Alright. <sighs> I think one of the main issues is too in positions like this is that um black will even struggle to keep the queens on the board because after queen takes c7 it's just where do you go? Yeah, black gets the pawn, but then beef on uh, drunk pirate is hanging too. So that's going to be a pawn exchange. And yeah. uh, white is going to end up with two extra pawns. And that's game over. Yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, remember yeah. that white has taken already two pawns. So even if they lose b4 and then win b5, yeah. it's still two pawns up. Yeah. Very good job. But definitely not a natural move. So it's all right <laughs> that we didn't consider it first. Whoa, all right, cool. Thank you, Anna. But it of, wasn't course, played. of course, that wasn't played. Yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> like, like, like Anna needed to say that. Yes, all right, thanks. Yeah. All right. Rook c8 was the choice of Hui Fan. And uh, now the question is Does b4 work? The move that we learned from the previous analysis, does that work here? Good question. What do you think? Well, I, I already know the answer because I know the, the way your your answer the way you're asking the question means no, and I just need to figure out why. Let's figure out why. Okay, so if I play b4 here, uh, yeah, there is. Hmm. Good question. Hold on. All right, so b4, there is this lovely sequence with, ooh, that's, that would be cool. Uh, there is knight a4. Uh -huh. And after knight f a4, if we actually take on d5, um, Takes, takes, takes. There is this. Hold on, let me think for a second. Um, hey, Liam, put the chest. Thank you for the cheer. So, all right, so b4, knight a4. 
and then and then play take on d5 right mm -hmm. all right so what we can do here as black is we can give a check on a3 so wait a second b4 knight a4 knight takes oh we can't jump over the pawn right yeah so. It would be cool if we could. But it would be yeah. All right. So knight a. <laughs> oh, sorry. B four. Knight a four. Takes on d five. I. What's wrong with my arrow drawing capabilities <laughs> today? All right. So what is the threat here? Knight d five. And. Uh, All right, so what is the threat here? If we, they can't take on B4 because of, all right, the E7 here is under threat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure knight f4 is the first move of the sequence. Knight a4. But what is the follow-up after knight d5? It's a mess of a position. It is. Uh, and everyone is playing on the wrong side because b4 feels like it's moving a pawn on the wrong side. It's only justified because there's this concrete line. If not, b4 wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, but like, uh, what is the concrete line? Uh, okay. Why am I not seeing the concrete line? Um... If I take, can I take on B4? So in which line? I'm just thinking loud. I'm not saying that's sure. the line. So what is it that I can do here? Okay. Obviously I don't want to take on D5 because then I'm playing into White's hands. Uh -huh. um, though to be very frank uh, you know after every all is said and done I'm just gonna do this takes 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 exchange and takes 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 bishop b4 it's pretty scary after the trade of queens too yeah mm-hmm not to mention, yeah, because this this king is in doo-doo. <laughs> there is a threat of bishop of a3, knight here, and hey, there came my, my friend. Thank you for the six months sub. It's very good, good to see you. Yes, it's torture has been already in stepped up, but thank you. Hey, Tia, thank you for the cheer. Let's play at that line because it's a very complex one, so we could look at the right, so, resulting position a bit more. All right, so let's do this. So it takes, and I presume... I, and you were taking on d5 first. Oh, I yeah, thought. my bad, sorry. So taking on d5, taking on d5. Obviously, I don't have anything better than this. Or do I? No, I don't. Okay. Takes, 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 takes. Now, this is... I mean, this is fairly unpleasant for white, I would think. What do you think would be the best move here for white? All right, so concrete threat here is something along the lines of, uh, you know, there are a couple of checks here that are annoying. Like something like this, then here, 
It's not terribly concrete, to be frank. Hmm. I was actually curious to see the engine evaluation of this position, to be frank, Anna. <laughs> Will I turn it back on? Let me see. Bishop <laughs> takes B4. After Bishop takes B4, you mean? Yeah. After Bishop takes... Wait, where is it? Uh, nine three four takes takes. Mm. All right. And bishop b four, and it is. Uh, what would you guess? Uh, plus one point five. Plus three point eighty four. Ouch. Okay. So much for my evaluation capabilities. All right. So. <laughs> but it's so because why? Actually, it's because white has a concrete idea there so you were you would be right that black has compensation if black gets to play again but here if white continues with either rook g3 or bishop d4 bishop d4 i think is the strongest yeah that that's, that's just puts a stop to the initiative and, and white starts attacking again and g7 i don't think can be protected properly if bishop d4 and no. rook g3 and are coming two bishops are too way too strong okay yeah so so much for that okay yet uh, bishop a4 knight a4 has to be the right move so what am i missing after knight takes d5 okay i have a black does not have to take back on d5 no. um but we also don't want to be material down so what do you think can be considered here as as awkward as it is Okay. The threat of white is knight takes e7, so like that's an issue that knight takes e7, yeah, queen yeah, takes e7 yeah, is yeah, yeah. is there. I see that, and this. Okay, so what what can we intercede here? All right. So the problem with knight e7 is that it's a check. Yeah. And then that bishop is falling. Uh huh. It is. Okay. The problem is that that bishop, the bishop on e seven, doesn't have many spots to go to. Mm -hmm. Defending it to the rook falls to bishop g five. You know, Arkantosan, you may be right. Maybe knight might be the time to take on take on h4. Yeah, as strange as it is, because that's not a file we want to open, but the bishop is hanging on e7, and it needs to go regardless, so we may as well take a pawn in the meantime and then try to take on d5 if we want to, but at least we have for now taken a pawn. It's a very awkward position where white has pushed before, black takes the pawn on h4. It's totally how we are not supposed to be playing opposite side casting, but it's a mess. It's an absolute mess. And if you want to know the other line of the engine, because this is one where it says, okay, it's unclear. And the other one uh, is not knight a4, but knight to b3. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that actually makes sense. And then it takes with a bishop e4, and that knight is. Oh, Jesus. Okay. So the line goes a takes, bishop takes, and if bishop d4, it's the only way. Well, the bishop has to go somewhere. Actually, not the only way, because the rook can protect c3 as well, but uh, the bishop has to go somewhere. Uh, if it doesn't go on d4, then black can, uh, you know, black can push e5, d4, and it's pretty unpleasant. Uh huh. Yeah, and if it goes on, goes to d4. Then, then e5 finally rears its head in its full glory. It does. 
<laughs> it does. It was just a peace sacrifice. <laughs> well done. Well done. Uh, this is this is Anna having fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you like the game too. <laughs> yeah, I do. I Rodman, good night, Rodman, Ron. It's thank you for being with us. Okay. Good night. Good night. All right. Yeah. So before it wasn't played. Um, for various reasons also might be the case that it wasn't even considered uh, but the, yeah it's good to analyze those differences because after b5 it was very strong sure without without that and the rook on c8 which is much more useful for black than the pawn on b5 this is a different story so in the game white played g4 and now it's black to move what do we do all right so g4 basically eliminates most of the fabled threats of e5. Uh -huh. Such a good move. Um, all right. All right, we still can't, still can't play e5. We can now play b5, but it's less strong now. Uh -huh. We can play a6 and then b5. So what was the reasoning that uh, you need to you need you have to play it with a6 or you or you think it's okay without a6 too well b5 the once again the same question <laughs> whether b5 is okay we can also play bishop f6 now that the knight is defended on c5 uh-huh Uh, hey, Jan Mawini, thank you for the follow. That's very greatly appreciated. Sorry for the phone interruptions, guys. Story of my life. Um, well, we, re we really... That rook on c8 is actually very well placed, and now the threat of bishop of uh, rook b8 is less... Uh, less threatening and also now the g4 is played the whole knight d5 thing the mess is now very very much in play so you think b4 cannot be played uh can it be played <laughs> yes okay what happens after b5 is it the move that that you think black should consider here All right, so b5 takes on b5 with a safe bishop. Yeah, All what right. happens afterwards? Takes, takes. Takes with a knight. Mm. You're calculating first bishop takes then the trade or you're saying now first knight takes i'm trying to decide to be very frank sure 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 no 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 it's fine um if uh, black i mean this knight e4 thing it looks pretty nasty right Alright, so let me look at a couple of sequences. I'm sorry. Anna. So, mm -hmm. pushes. We still can we take now on d5. What happens after knight takes d5? Takes, take here.
and we are basically in the same position, right? Do you want to play at those moves just so that to you confirm that there is right. what you calculated? So we're take we're talking about playing b5, right? Uh-huh. Takes what's the best line for black here? And why does it well this is a take with a check. So there's, there are no real swishing sooks here. But we don't need to take, we can do this. Right. So what would have happened if black took on d5? But then, but we don't want to do that. Hold on. Nope. All right, so if, if black takes on d5, yeah, we take with a rook, and that basically stops everything. Yeah, so and knight in c5 is not possible anymore. Yeah, so knight d5 is not possible anymore. d5, so that, elim that eliminated that. We take this, this, and then this. And what's the best line here? Um, can play so oh we don't want to give actually giving this pawn is perfectly fine we can do something like this uh-huh now what what's next um okay where does the white queen need to go yeah that's the problem and if the queen queen cannot go anywhere on this diagonal right no and when the it goes here white, black has this and if this then this and it's pretty ugly yeah, yeah. very good yeah okay so um So b5, would you or would you not play it? Well, now that I've seen this line, I would play it. And it's the move that Cleofan played indeed. Yeah, with the rook on c8, luckily for us, none of those lines work because as you showed, the moment white takes on c5, you can take back with the rook and protect d5. So it's a whole new different, uh, a, whole, a whole, yep. uh, different story because of the rook on c8 helping our attack and also helping to prevent that tactic come out if a knight takes d5. Sure. In the game, bishop takes b5 was played. How do we react to this? Okay. Uh, we just played that out, or we didn't. Um, the last one we looked at was knight takes b5. Let me promote this just so that it's less confusing. But yes, you also mentioned this one. So would you stick to the line that you calculated, or would you consider here anything else? Well... Okay, so we do this, we do this, we play this. Yeah. All right. Where does the queen go? It went to e1, and yes, it's the game. Yeah. Okay. For, for once, it did the game, actually. Okay, because white needs to prevent this, because if this True. happens, it's, it's ugly very quickly. Okay, so all right. So what do we do here if we're black? It almost feels we are winning, but proving it is interesting. Very good intuition that it almost feels like it's winning, because it's it's quite some advantage for black. Okay, thank you, Anna. So what's the concrete continuation? I mean, we can even play queen d7. Uh -huh. So that's one option. You almost wish that rook c2 would work, but I don't think it does. Uh, 
all right so we need to bring queen into the into attack we this silly thing here is actually preventing us from playing the natural queen a5 move true um we need to bring so the way to bring we cannot play here we cannot play here we cannot play here and we cannot play here i'm not sure that bishop moves contribute much because bishop here is actually very well developed mm -hmm. so queen b8 uh, rook b8 i think rook on by the rook on c or a to b8 is kind of not much of a difference so queen d7 is a natural is the move i would play and that's exactly what we found played Okay. Interesting, interestingly enough, it's not the best move. It's the most natural, and I, I think okay. it, it makes perfect sense. And in the game, he, uh, uh, Jan Smit uh, with the white pieces, he didn't react well to queen d7, and his position called up a move later. But what's interesting about queen d7 is that when I looked at it with the engine, it claims that queen d7 is a mistake, because it allows the very strong queen e2. <laughs> so the problem of the engine with queen d7 is that because we are not threatening anymore queen a5, white can improve the queen. And and it's still it's still a very interesting position. I think black should have the upper hand here. So it gives zero 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 as evaluation, <laughs> but with a pawn down. So if it's a pawn down and zero zero zero, then black is doing very well here. All right, guys. Here is one thing <laughs> about engines. Uh, I love when you know you have a list of engine moves, and first move is zero 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 and then yeah. second move is minus four yeah so if white doesn't play well it's all it's it's all advantage for white so queen yeah. e2 only move of course only move it wasn't played in the game by the way so queen e2 wasn't even played in the game and then every next move if white doesn't play the most precise it's once again advantage and black. 20 moves so, later is a draw yeah okay thank yeah. you yeah no, but that's that's totally totally how it works. And Queen D7 is such a natural move. It was played in the game and it worked in the game. But I'm just gonna show as comparison what is it that the, the engine really loves in this position. And you guys won't be surprised because we already have seen this awkward move in other positions too. We already played B5, so it's time to play the other awkward one. Bishop takes H4. Just opening up the H file, but here it's very concrete because yeah, the because F2 pawn F2 on drops. Pawn yeah so that's the reason why it works here but those are moves that we don't really look at because like you don't want to take on h4 uh, i wish i just can be programmed to accommodate beautiful moves mm. but anyway not gonna happen sorry yeah All right. unfortunately queen d7 was played and in the game uh young smith who as a is only at a the time, he yeah, know? a grandmaster rating of 2573 at the time of the game, he then went above 2600. Um, <laughs> so he played knight d4 with his tw almost 2600 rating. Ouch. What's next? What's Oof. next? All right, so. So you indicated that his position collapsed in one move. Um, very shortly, yeah. I I don't want to say exactly right now, but it's the beginning of, of a collapse, yes. Okay, so... That king is in trouble. How do we mate the king? Alright, so the most aggressive move is to play something along the lines of queen a4. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I almost don't want to consider any other move, to be honest with you. This looks lethal. Uh-huh. All right, so this is pickled. And what do you do here? This knight is an absolute monster. All right, so queen a4. Mm-hmm. What do you think white should do after queen a4? Design. 
actually it has a motive. This thing here is interesting. Okay, mm -hmm. so my threat is to take this. To take a two, yes. Yeah. How shall I react? If I play a three, I'm basically resigning. Mm -hmm. Why do you say so? Because you just take bishop takes an a three. That's game over. Yeah. Okay, so a3 is not an option, but I can, can I play, I can't play, can I play, the problem is if I play knight d3, queen a2, that knight is pinned. But then I can move the bishop and the knight is defended, there is no queen a1. And so you think the best for white is to give up the a2 pawn? All right. What other options do I have, Anna? I don't know. I'm asking, can you somehow keep it? Keep the, I mean, play queen, king b1? Yeah. What do you think of that? Oh, okay. Such a... All right, so... King B1, and then what? This is a very promising position, so this would definitely be one of the main choices. But there's right. something even more concrete, because after King B1, it's, it's bad for white, and white, uh, white, black should be very confident about that attack on, on the queen side. But after Knight D4, there's something even more concrete. Okay. So if we start with another see? move so um, instead of queen a4 okay yeah queen a4 is, is is one of the best but there's there's a line that's that's gonna be similar later but right now it's just this knight on d4 and how it allows it allows wow, okay all right, again, I'm not seeing it. So what am I missing? Because it's too obvious. <laughs> it's too obvious. Okay, e5. <laughs> yep, what happened after e5? Okay, e5. Uh, we have, we almost have to go to b3, right? Uh-huh, and then? And then we can play d, can we... okay e5 knight b3 we can play d4 now d4 is one of the best options yes okay and then we take on f2 after that after that um, bishop moves and that's yeah. the end of it yeah so we we are pinned on the d5 but queen takes g4 is a threat and then the bishop would be hanging and the rook on h3 would be hanging so this position is a decisive advantage yeah that's game over yeah you and... can also take first because this is hanging and then go for d4 but it's very similar wow okay so e5 basically knight d4 was a big mistake because even though in the other position too black has quite some compensation for the pawn after knight d4 e5 it all collapses um yeah, 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 so yeah. white played knight to f5 what would you play here nicola in this position yeah in this position i think queen a4 is oh no the bishop is still hanging sorry i can't play that so Hmm. Well, I can play bishop. Even, even if I play bishop a3, I'm winning, right? Bishop a3? Yeah, I can't play that because this. 
Okay, hold on. I don't want to. I can. I, I'm just. What? Why am I wasting my time? I'm just gonna take the knight. Yeah, well done. No, but, uh, honestly, when I looked at Bishop A3, probably that's also winning. Because the position is. of black is, is so... It is winning, but there is no need to go into that mess. P possibly this is also winning, um, as yeah. crazy as it is. Yeah. But you're right, this is even simpler to yeah. just give up just give up the exchange. I think uh, I... Queen A4 is probably stronger. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I was just... Yeah, I was thinking whether there's knight E7, even without the bishop there, to pick up the rook. Ah, fair um, enough. Yeah, you're right. Okay. But the simplest is what you said. No, give up the exchange. Take the, take the take, yeah, and this is hanging. This is an issue. Yeah, the game over. So exchange up for white, but basically a lost position. Yeah. White tried to play rook h2 in case they will have the time to push the f pawn and protect on c2. What do you think black should play here? Now that. Uh... Uh, okay. I mean, uh, d4 is perfectly fine. And it's the best move, and it's exactly what we found play too. Because yeah. the bishop has nowhere to go, if you place, bish uh, the, play, uh, place the bishop on d2, then the c2 pawn will not then be protected anymore with the then, then knight, The knight f2 yeah. is winning immediately. Yeah, wins immediately. Yeah. Um, not just knight takes d1 and queen takes c2 are the threats, but also knight d3. Yep. So it's terrible. Disaster. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, after d4, white played f3. How would you react to this move? This is the final nice move in the game that should be found. The rest are much simpler. Okay. Um... I uh, okay, so can't I just take on F3? You could, you could take on F3, uh, there's, but there's something even stronger, much stronger. Okay, what am I missing? Basically, it's the kind of move that makes your opponent resign, although this has to be calculated, but if it works. Okay, so... Right, what am I missing? Alright, so this is not a mate threat anymore because of this thing. True. Um, the this is not really in play yet. Um, Okay, so hmm. if this pawn didn't exist, we would have knight f2, and then there is a threat. Or if it takes with a bishop, it's obviously a mate here. doesn't work that doesn't work out either all right what am i missing nicola come on wake up it's your kind of move but it has to be calculated my kind of move okay yes all right So let's see here. I mean, I don't see a mate if I take on c2. All right, and I, I'm getting amused here. <laughs> which, so we which, already have which sacrificed you, which on the exchange. Which you're enjoying. 
So we have I'm start... very much enjoying this. This is one of the final moments in the game that needs to be solved. And you already have sacrifice and exchange, so time to sacrifice more material, Nicola. It's it's never enough. No, I understand that it's a sacrifice, so what are we sacrificing? Uh, do we have a mate if we... Oh, we actually... Do we? Ooh, yes, we do. But hold on a second. I mean, if he takes with a king, it's a very beautiful mate, but he's not. <coughs> so I can't Sorry. play this, which is tempting. <coughs> okay. This he takes with a rook. <coughs> I don't have this bishop. <coughs> All right. Okay, let's consider. Let's consider only night moves. Night moves? Okay. Only night moves. Okay. All right, so. Um, that's a huge hint. I still don't see it, though. <laughs> uh, thank you, Anna. Uh, okay, so. We need, if we're moving the knight, we're threatening mate. So. Depends on where we move it, right? Exactly. Hold on a second. All right. So knight c3 takes, takes. We're threatening this, but that's. Actually, that is a pretty quick mate, as a matter of fact. Okay, so that's one option. Because if he takes, it's pretty much rather quickly game over. All right, because bishop a3 here and so on, that's fine. So that's one option. Uh, knight attacks here and here, obviously fall to take to, with a rook. Mm -hmm. Knight g3 it doesn't work. And, I, and return, retreating the knight doesn't work either. So, so is this it? It is. Okay. Knight to c3, and it's basically curtains for white. The position okay. after it will be a full rook up, but this position is, is over. So if king b1, then rook b8, bishop b2, and all those moves, uh, if, in, if the white king comes in this direction, then the issue is that the h2 rook is also hanging, or if white plays... Ah. Bishop d2. Even if white manages to keep the exchange for some time, this position, um, well, the h2 rook is hanging. So this is just a, a variation where, yeah. uh, okay. white, white's king is still not full is um in survival mode, and we are picking up material. It's a very lengthy line, but your intuition was right. That after after knight, a, knight c3 b takes, this has to be bad for white. Yeah, no, it, it, it is. And, uh, you know, if it goes on b1, bishop a3, then rook, uh, rook b8. If he yeah, goes we can play out that there. line too, exactly. So yeah, and then b2. takes, takes, uh, like this picks bishop up the queen c3, as, and, as the least. And... You know, you don't even need to take the queen. You can play b rook b2 and it's a mate and two and it's questionable whether it would be defended. I mean, True. Not, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, c2 is protected still, but you mean like rook a2 and rook a1, right? Yes. As the yeah. mate, yeah. Nice, yeah. You don't even need the queen. You are, you are right. 
in the game of the knight c3. So this was this is why uh, knight d4 was so bad because it stepped in three five and then all this all this uh, came out of the blue. But knight c3 is a winning move. Bishop takes d4 was the attempt of Yam Smith, after which Hoyefan took on d1, and after Bishop takes e5. Tell me a final pretty move here for black. There are many good options, but I think she found the most practical one to to win material. Because okay. she's a piece up, but the knight on d1 is hanging and doesn't have a way out. Okay, so... All right, the most practical move here is what? Um, or so to say, if the D1 knight is lost regard uh, anyway, it's going to be lost no matter what, then why don't we take down the house with it? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I hear you. All right, so what is the obvious combination here? Um... All right, so this I'm looking for geometric motives. Let me see. Huh. All right. So what do we do here? Okay. I mean, we can f play queen. Well, we don't want to play queen f3 because then we are losing that knight with no, with no compensation. <laughs> well, we cannot play. What else can we play here? Hmm. They can't take on C2. Well, we can take on F3 and then we're threatening to play if white takes the takes the knight, we play queen E3 and we're collecting the bishop. Yeah, the issue after queen takes F3 is that white can play bishop D4 and then collect the knight. Fair enough. Okay. Okay, so but don't we oh we don't. Yeah, sorry, I was I was hoping we have Queen F four, but we don't. Okay. And that's actually would be losing. Okay. Uh Successful torture session, Anna. Thank you. You're welcome. It's only the final move that you need to find. So a desperado. That knight is going to be lost no matter All what. Right, so we'll take on B2. We can take on B2 if we want. What other desperados would you consider? Okay. From a knight? Because we, we want to have material up after the knight will be taken. And that's, that's our piece up for now. Can we... Can we somehow keep material up it's a question here well yeah okay I, 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 I see the line it's play knight c3 rook c3 but then the e7 bishop is hanging yeah let me think about it all right so desperado this right but then we play this and we are collecting. But this bit thing is hanging. Also, are you sure you're collecting the rook? I know there's rook d2, but that's almost a minor point. <laughs> so that doesn't work either. Uh, 
yeah we we kind of yeah this is the move yeah that's it nice <laughs> yeah okay it's not been a long day that's my defense and i'm sticking to it it's all right, all right. it's all right nicola so what does this move achieve why is it resignation well, the queen time is, queen is overloaded and basically if queen takes this this is the end of this rood and if it's this famous move bishop f4 is finally the end of the road and white doesn't have any checks yeah exactly this wow. after bishop this was the game uh rook takes bishop takes h4 bishop c3 and hoifan didn't even take the rook just yet but played the computer's first choice queen f7 <laughs> so okay. pointing out that the a2 is hanging too and after king b1 she played rook f8 <laughs> Uh, she just found all the very best moves of the engine. A4, A6. The rook is not going anywhere. <laughs> and after bishop B4, when her position was the most ready and most ideal for this, that the pawn will not be hanging. This is already hanging. This is when she took uh, on F2. And then she took on F3 and won the game. Uh, just want to mention again that she was 13 years old when she played this game. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, my brain is officially jello. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Thank I you like so this game. Uh, how old was the? Uh, how old was Jan at the time? Um, maybe around. Wait, what would he be? Uh, I think he's just about my age, so he would be around twenty. Okay, uh, and he was he became 20, 25 73 was his rating and then he became a 2600 over 2600 yeah. and member master. of the olympic team of the netherlands for years i i'm not gonna say that if i if i got this type of a beat down with a, against a 13 year old that i would consider retirement <laughs> with I, the cute hair clips in her hair because that's how she was playing these games <laughs> a cute 13 year old uh, a beast at the board but she looked like such a such a an adorable girl she is still of course a lovely person but i think when you when you look at 13 year old who you find you would think oh no no way that like she's gonna beat me like she's so cute and tiny but no, no harm no harm at all yeah well, i agree with the kid for <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and I... that nice yeah i i loved how this after 94 everything was rolling e5 then the exchange sacrifice then nice c3 it was just a massacre after one mistake of white hey hand brain thank you for the follow-up yeah uh, uh, i'm sorry um you know <laughs> You know, as you know, you know my opinion of French defense. That's uh, an ugly beat down. Hey, chess noob. It's a pretty, yeah. Okay. Oh, we just, Anna, we just got the huge raid from Grandmaster Hat with a party of 674. Thank you so much to Robert Hess <laughs> for the raid. I, if Nicola, if you want to you stay play against your viewers because yes. after uh, this raid, I don't know if you have the time to stay. I'll I'll have to be going. But yeah. if you want to keep the stream, I just want to before we adjourn. Hey guys, welcome to Nicola Lawrence Chess with the International Master Anna Rudolph. This is uh, this is a weekly this is a weekly series in which Anna tortures me. And we have just watched the game uh, between uh, it, Grandmaster Hoffen versus uh, Jan, Jan Smits. Smith. Jan yes, Smith. Yes, indeed. Hoffen was only 13 years old when yeah. she played this game in Wycombe yeah. Zay. And we have just actually finished uh, finished the stream. I would I'm gonna stay for a little bit, but just before Anna Anna needs to go. But I actually want to show a couple of games from my match from. Uh, 
international uh, that I lost that I actually managed to avoid adoption recently. So let me, let me just make one comment. It's very interesting. It's very instructive how white loses its spread in French defense. Yeah. Uh, it's very typical, it's very usual, and it's very instructive. So thank you for picking this up. My favorite um, part of this is, uh, it's not this, but where is that B4 move that we looked at? Oh yeah, absolutely. This, uh, no, that no, was no. gonna be... No, that's after here. B5. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, if Black it's were to play this. B5, it yes. was going to be a mistake because of B4. So here is uh, here is a guys a quick analysis uh, for everybody here in the stream. It's okay. So what is the meaning, winning move in this position? And we Anna and I analyzed this, and we looked at takes on B5 and various variations of this and so on and so forth i'll spare you the details but basically the winning move in this position is b4 and the advantage of b4 is that when this knight is kicked off then taking on d5 actually wins the game because this bishop is no longer defended so yeah anyway so uh, the, Anna and I have this have this session every Wednesday. Today is obviously Tuesday, and we are doing this on Tuesday because Anna has become uh, an extremely popular commentator. So she is gonna do a, a tournament in St. Louis tomorrow. So this we're doing this on a special day. Normally this yeah it starts on on Friday but because of that I had to move everything from from yeah. my usual week and Robert will be commentating for chess.com yes. with Alexandra Botez on the event so there will be a couple of different shows that you guys can all have the different tabs open the official stainless coverage Alex and Robert for chess.com and Abby on Hikaru's channel with Gotham right. Chess Levy Roseman yeah so thank you Anna for this game uh, I'm going to stay around. I want to sh show one game that I lost against Karina um, Bartsumova on Sunday. That's something I wanted to analyze um, on stream. Incidentally, the channel also have another regular featured program, which is uh, my best losses at 8 p.m. on on Mondays and of course yesterday we had a match between uh, Haufen and Grandmaster Morozovic so I didn't want to counter program uh, an open field media event so uh, that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be this Thursday and Sundays at noon there is adopt Nikola series I think we are now on the 12th match in the series so mm -hmm. anyway Anna, thank you for uh, thank you so much Nikola and thanks everybody for the participation thank you. Oh, I think J JB Mecco is already answering because uh, I was just going to answer the question about, about what tournament. But yes, it's the St. Louis Champion Showdown, Fisher, yeah. Random, Blitz and Rapid. Gary Kasper will be playing too, so everybody should be watching. Yeah. I'm already looking forward to looking at Kasparov and so on. But guys, stay. I kind of don't want to wait until Thursday. I really need to show you a <laughs> game that I managed to lose it against Karina because it's a very instructive game. Uh, in you Lopez so uh, as soon as we're gonna let Anna go and then I'm gonna just re readjust the layout and we will will continue thank you for, thank enjoy you, the Raiders. game everyone yeah thank, thank you. you thank you to Robert again thank you Robert for, for the, the huge raid and I am gonna end the zoom call bye Anna good luck bye everyone enjoy the game it I'll, was I'll... it was the roller coaster the game yes. you're about to witness just yes. so that you know what yeah. you're in for yeah anyway so let me uh, buy an um, join and let me hold on let me not do this all right so remove all right and just guys bear with me while i adjust this real quick we're gonna hide anna oops and we're gonna hide anna zoom and where is this? Okay, so I, oh. All right, so let me hide this. Yeah. All right, so just a very quick note. Uh, this is this was played uh, 
exactly two days ago in a Dubai match against uh, Karina Bartsumova, who is a very strong, uh, who is a very strong player and an absolutely fabulous streamer. So let's give her a shout out in the in the chat. And let me just adjust this real quick. Oops. There. Oh, no, not this. This. Let me move this over here. Let me expand so you guys can actually see me. And I obviously don't want to be that big. And so let me start this. This. Okay. Blah, blah. Okay, very good. And let's get my thing towards the middle. All right. So I'm going to start the oop, start this. All right, so the game was very instructive and just so everybody knows this game was played this was the, uh, the game i'm going to show you and let me find it here it the game was played it was a third game in our uh in our match and uh, although that's a game that i ended up losing all right so that where is it it's here uh yeah that's the game all right all right so let me just adjust this real quick bear with me oh uh, no i don't want to do that okay all right very good And I'm going to go back to the beginning. All right. And I was black in this. I was black in this game. And this is actually part of variation that I prepared for Karina. Uh, she plays D3 Iru Lopez on a regular basis. And I kind of knew what I can expect. So just two more seconds. The, so I can adjust this. So you guys can actually see the evaluation. All right, that's good enough. Okay. All right, let me expand. Oh, no. Okay. All right. Oops. All right, so here it here is the so here is this I had to change in anything you like Nicola ah very good so so I think I know what is Dirkia's favorite hat so I'm gonna put that one does that work for you Dirkia there you go all right. So let's uh, take a quick look at, at this game and in, in, in this particular position. Um, basically, what I would like to show you here is uh, what this was a game three and I lost the first two games fairly decisively. Obviously, you know, I am a 1950 player. The, you know, Karina is a very strong international master. She's actually stronger than 2505. So what we played was uh, a D3 Rue Lopez. And that's basically characterized by this position in which white, instead of playing Rook E1, which is the normal move in this position, instead uh, plays D3. Uh, and if you look here, and I'm actually going to do the do start to bring the analysis analysis board here and let me see if i can actually expand this so it fills the screen which i can which is good uh, you will see that if you look at the report 
um, you know, the accuracy is not very good on either our size, sides, but, uh, and we made plenty of blunders in which, uh, you know, we'll, you, will, you will actually see the game. But the game itself is fairly instructive. And uh, I, this is actually my favorite game of the match. Oh, thank you, Chestnut KZ. I'm glad you like the choice. Um, so D3, and uh, we contested this. We actually played full 10 games. I managed to win uh, the very last game. It was a very wild game. Uh, so it ended up being 9-1. But we contested this D3 rule Lopez uh, throughout the match. In other words, that's something that Karina played uh, consistently throughout the, you know, throughout the match. So in the very first game, I played b5, and very frankly, ended up in a very difficult position. So what ended up happening in this in this particular game is that I ended up, instead of treating this as a Rio Lopez, I wanted to play this almost as if it was an Italian uh, four knights game. Um, so to go back to the analysis engine, instead of b5, I played d6, which is actually, if you look closer, computer is going to prefer uh, b5 when it's settled down, but I didn't like the position I ended up with. My preference in this position, incidentally, is to play martial, martial attack, and uh, which is rook e1, b5, you know, bishop b3, and then castle, and then play c3, d5. And I have played that with considerable success, and that's my favorite version of Euro Lopez. Uh, so instead of d3, basically goes into a position of sideline that obviously favors a stronger player, which Karina was. So after d6, a3 is the best move, castle is the best move, and knight c3, computer considers to be an error but that's a perfectly perfectly fine and acceptable move because it uh, prevents any motives associated with bishop g4 so this uh, translates this game into uh, some sort of a maneuvering italian style position which bishops are on b3 and e7 but it's it's similar motives um, so what are the problems for black here? The problems for black here is that this bishop is uh, not as well placed here as it would be on this particular diagonal. And in these positions, the bishop should probably go to a7. And second, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, black is a little bit passive. So after after a, a3, you know, h, uh, h6, I was supposed to play bishop b6, bishop b3, bishop e6. I have a bias towards uh, opening up the f file here, and arguably that's not the best move. And I was taught, told by many chessable courses and quite a few people that I should stop playing it, but I'm pretty comfortable doing this. So after bishop e6, knight d5, best move. Uh, yeah, even chess master, if it wasn't c5, black play knight e7. And basically the strategy here, if uh, this is an Italian game, is you basically want to transfer the c6 knight over to, to, over to g6 and then play c6 and push d5, the knight is very happy on f4, and so on. So that's a standard plan in this type of semi-Italian position. I couldn't do this, but I wasn't unhappy with this position because, you know, I, I was fine. I played knight d4, which computer doesn't like, but in uh, in the previous previous game and this couple of subsequent games, the motive of pushing c5 and b5 and with this pawn on d4, you have a motive of pushing d5 and c4 and then that basically boxes in this bishop. And uh, this bishop is the most active piece that white has in this position. It's the famous Spanish bishop uh, in Rio Lopez. So, you know, Anyway, so knight if the take on d4, take on d4, uh, take on f6, takes, uh, and 
here is basically the structure uh, we were we were considering in other words you know bl black has an advantage on the on the queen side and also an ability to potentially box this bishop in Karina didn't want to go into this bishop e6 uh, e bishop e6 uh, line because after takes on f6 this structure is actually pretty good for black and uh, you know Normally, there are motives here with sacrificing this bishop on h6, and you will see what plan actually Karina chose. Karina basically chose to uh, place the queen on g4 after the exchange of bishops and attempt an attack. Um, so anyway, I took the advantage that he could b3 and damaged the pawn structure. Uh, c5, all normal moves, queen g4, and I frankly felt that that move was, uh, you know, and uh, for for the record, Karina is a much stronger player than I will ever be, ever. Uh, but I kind of felt that that move was a little bit, uh, I don't want to say premature, but it was kind of too aggressive because that queen by itself doesn't really have anywhere to go and any attempt of attack would go somewhere. So I took a deep breath. I actually spent some time thinking. You'll see I actually spent uh, 20, uh, like almost 50 seconds thinking about it. And I decided, all right, fine. Let me mix it up. Let me play queen b6. And which transpired that it's a computer, it's the best computer move. And I'm very proud of that move that it played. It takes a little bit of, um, you know, guts to, to not to use the bad, different world word to uh, allow myself to you know take the queen away from the king side while queen is on uh, g4 why is queen b6 uh, a good move uh, well the thing is the white doesn't really have a good way of defending this pawn so uh, you know any attempt at attack would uh, with queen stays here would basically require sacrificing this pawn and sacrificing pawn on b3 that questions this pawn and and you know and on top of it there is a potential for a huge pawn avalanche b5 c4 and so on and so forth this bishop is not terribly active and i was at this point very frankly starting to be happy with my position and uh, you know uh, one thing about these adoption matches is uh they come together with a very huge adrenaline rush because I'm playing people who are much stronger than me. And when I get into a position at move 16 in which I am feeling that I'm getting better, I, you know, I get an adrenaline rush and I'm starting to, starting, I want to say shake, but that's how I feel. Anyway, so after f5, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, we, uh, I decided to, you know, not allow this sacrifice on h6, which, uh, you know, computer actually does, you know, if you look, uh, computer considers there are only two good moves in this position. It's king h7 and king h8. And then other, any other move, like any rook move, bishop takes on h6. And this is very dangerous for black. So queen h7 is the best move. And then basically there is no attack anymore. And here we are, you know, white needs to ret retreat the queen to defend, to defend pawn on b3. I, I went with the, which is a standard team in this position, which is d5 uh, and white takes queen d6. So if you look closer, you have this f pawn, you have the pawn on d5, you have pawn on d3 and pawn on b3. And uh, it's, these are basically impossible to defend. So after queen f3, rook d8, it's attacking, it's attacking the pawn. Uh, bishop d2, bishop f4 is preferred by the computer. Take on, take on d5, all normal moves, queen g4. And then, you know, uh, I, for those of you who have seen me analyze games and uh, do my studies with them. I know that I'm not necessarily a pawn grabber, but that b3 pawn was uh, a perfect morsel to, to consider. And I have, I decided to take it. So after taking it, rook f3, 
you know, white is continuing the attack, take, you know, free stuff, as Anna Rudolph, my dear friend, would say, and coach, uh, take on d1, and, uh, you know, this is starting to look good for me, to be very frank with you guys. I, at this point, I thought, okay, this is game number three, and uh, I might have a chance to defeat adoption in, in the very third game against, uh, you know, twen I think uh, Karina is a 2400 level international master. Karina is definitely after Aman, who uh, the second strongest player I've, I've faced in these adoption matches. Anyway, so after Queen C2 and, you know, let, let, let me be, hey, Fidel Corrales, my dear friend. We have a Grandmaster Corrales in chat. Let me just give him a quick shout out. Uh, so please, if you already haven't given uh, given a follow and a sh and uh, and a sub to Grandmaster Corrales, it's very good to see you. Thank you, thank you for joining here. I'm analyzing a game that I played on Sunday adoption match against Inter International Master Karina Bratsumova. All right, so Queen C2 is, you know, a pretty good move. Uh, and, uh, you know, Rook H3 is continuous with the attacking theme. But uh, when you look closer, white here doesn't have anything concrete. And, uh, you know, hey, Dirk, yeah, thank you for gifting us up to Grandmaster Corrales. That's very greatly appreciated. Thank you. Uh, all right, so rook d8, which is not the best move. Thank you, computer. Rook h5. Rook e3 is one of those moves that uh, I played on on a feel, uh, and that's probably my favorite move in the whole in the whole match because uh, it's it basically demonstrates that uh, you know white has literally here nothing. The threats are obvious after takes an a3, takes an a3, then you have uh, you know it's the black who is attacking as opposed to white. And, uh, you know, takes an e3, takes an e3, and then rook e1. And here is my biggest uh, disappointment <laughs> of the match. And, uh, you know, if you have seen it, you will discover that I've blundered quite a few games in most of these matches and quite a few pieces. If you look closer, you, have, you see that I have 27 seconds. And uh, I have... 27 seconds, which should be enough to see a very simple tactics. A very simple tactic is the first line of the computer, which is queen f2. And then after king h1, it's a mate. And that would have been defeated adoption on the, in game number three. And this is a problem that I have throughout. And what uh, throughout all my uh, chess play it's uh, if you look closer at my play throughout this game it's one very good hey thank you Harhorn, for the follow that's very greatly appreciated if you look throughout the games i've played it's literally one best move after another one excellent move very well played game and then you overlook a simple tactic uh, as in you know and this is not even a difficult tactic this is like a puzzle rush puzzle number two or maybe three Hey, Fidel, Grandmaster Corrales, thank you. Thank you, Fidel, for the follow. That's very greatly appreciated. So, you know, so I missed this. And here is another frustration. After Queen... Uh, okay, sorry. No, no, I don't, want, I don't want that line. So after this, I played Queen D2. Uh, and as soon as I dropped the, dropped the Queen on D2, I realized, oh my goodness, I have a mate in two. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I muted those uh, during these, the, these adoption matches uh, so I can concentrate on games. But I had a series of expletives that if anybody reads my lips, I'm not very proud of it. But I did. But here is another thing. Black is still winning. 
and black is winning fairly comfortably because uh, you know uh, its computer uh, computer evaluation is minus two point forty seven, and I should be winning this fairly straightforward. So after queen d2, queen e2 is the best move. Rook e8 is a slight inaccuracy. I should have played bishop d4. But here I'm starting to learn roll of time. But realistically, this should be a straightforward win. I should, all I have to do here is to consolidate position instead of playing bishop c3 to play bishop d4. And if I played that, I'm pretty sure I would be able to Hey, Fidel, thank you for your kind words. You know, I should probably be able to win this position. After all, it's minus 2.92. The problem is that, you know, uh, all of us uh, sometimes fight a different uh, battles, you know, past battles. And I still, uh, you know, remembered that I actually blundered, you know, blundered uh, a win. And obviously now I have, you know, blundered uh, the e3 pawn and you know after blundering the e3 pawn i'm all of a sudden in an end game that yes i have here a bishop and a pawn power for the exchange but this end game is very close to being lost if not already lost for black so the lesson I'm trying to impair or show you guys or tell you is a, you know, you know, I need to learn how to do this. In other words, after a blunder, you know, you still have a one position, keep playing for a win, you will win. And, you know, Bishop C3, I was kind of hoping to, uh, you know, do this and uh, take on E1. But the problem is that that actually fails to uh, fails to rook d1, and after rook d1, this position is basically equal. This is a drawn position, and uh, drawn drawn position is would still have defeated the adoption, but obviously the path to that uh, adoption is uh, fairly narrow. Anyway, so I'll show you the rest of the game. Oh, Fide Trainer, Anna had to leave because she had something uh, scheduled. So yeah, she's not, uh, uh, this is the Colorance Chess. I can probably be, I'm gonna be cheeky and uh, yeah, I'm gonna actually hide this. So it will be just, that there won't be any confusion. Anna had to leave, I'm just continuing the stream. Um, anyway, so, b5 is an inaccuracy and obviously i'm not uh, you know uh, at 25 seconds i am not uh yeah lolly thank you thank you for kind words lolly has always been encouraging on my chest and uh, you know so you know i then actually didn't play this end game this badly the problem is that this end game is really strategically lost and uh, to, in karina's uh, you know, Karin is a professional player. She's a she's a very strong player. It's an honor for me to be in the same room, play play the game with her. Um, but you know, the problem here is that you know she even gave me some chances here. For example, this uh, rook c5 would allow me to take the pawn on h2, but I assume that I would be able to take it at any time. So I missed the opportunity and then in the end after playing B2. And this is an achieving what's basically a semi-defensive position because if you look at the computer, the engine, the you know, what the computer wants, wants you to do, which is very hard to do is uh, to take on H2 and uh, basically then uh, push this pawn further up and uh, kind of maintain maintain equality there i felt that at the time that this was that was a lost position so i didn't go there and look at this this is b1 pro various promotions and you know I, I, one of these days i'm going to talk to various things and of course uh, feed the trainer 
I I made a blunder because I messed up. So I played King F5, and obviously this is that we lost. So uh, you know, to the reason I'm showing you this game is that if you look closer, I am not unhappy with the way I played this game. Uh, you know. Uh, I think from a standpoint of a, of a practical chances, deciding not to play this B5 line after I got crushed in the game one was the right decision. And this instead of playing D3, D6, although B5 is objectively, you know, a better move. I, you know, obviously there are plenty of imprecisions here, imprecisions here on my side, but you know, the fact that I played this reasonably well and that, you know, I kind of faced down this attack on the king side was for me a very interesting, you know, practical choice. I'm actually very proud of, of how that went. Uh, D5 is a motive that ended up recurring in multiple games is... Uh, you know, that is a normal, I play this in quite a few lines. Oh, thank you, Chesnoop Casey. That's very greatly appreciated. And, you know, um, so after Queen D6, you know, uh, this part of the game, if you look closer, this was basically handled very precisely. And I am going to remain very proud of this rookie three move because that move does two things. It, uh, you know, it uh, called, it basically prevents it. Uh, let me, let, let's actually take a look at this position and why I'm so proud of this rookie three move. Uh, rook e3 move does two things. Uh, it uh, kind of prevents any black uh, white attempt to sacrifice on h6. Uh, and it also attacks this rook. And obviously, without this rook, you know, queen alone can't do anything else. But this rook is under attack. This bishop is questionable. This pawn is questionable. This whole thing is. White really has only one ch objective chance in this position, <laughs> and that position that is this attack. And rook e3 completely snuffs this out. And I'm very happy with that move. Uh, and you know, take on e3, take on e3, and then rook e3, one, and you know, one of these days, uh, somebody somewhere at some point is going to explain to me uh, why I made blunders like these. I mean, this was an easy tactic to spot. Uh, I would, I, you know, and normally I this happens when I have little to no time. Uh, queen, uh, you know, I, but I still have 27 seconds, which is plenty of time to stop what is basically a 300 level tactic. So, you know, I didn't do it. And then I completely misplayed the next following four or five moves. Like this bishop c3 was just stupid. Uh, the, the bishop be, be belongs on, d, on d4. And, you know, after this sequence, this particular endgame was basically objectively lost. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, thank you, Chesno. I, I'm I'm doing this, but it's fairly typical, and it happened in uh, more than one game in this match. In the end, I managed to win a game against Karina in the very last game, which was completely completely wild, and it was objectively completely ridiculous. But uh, so, but you know. Somewhere along the lines, my tactical ability should enable me to, you know, see this. And I'm going to show this one more time. Uh, and uh, what was very funny is that uh, the minute I played queen d2, I said, oh my god, I, sh I had a mate. 
and I even said that on stream and uh, uh, you know it's uh, well um, <clears throat> feedthetrainer.net uh, I I would be more than you know I have lots of half mother Karina is actually my half mother and uh, it's far from being rejection it's just uh, a way to figure out how to avoid these in the future or <clears throat> one thing that's interesting is that uh, you know ability to see and I'm going to go back here this queen f2 should be instantaneous should be part of my you know if you want muscle memory for anything else but it's uh, uh, you know it's an interesting question uh, you know so we'll anyway bottom line I managed to I managed to lose this game however I ended up and this was very different from some other matches in which I managed to defeat adoption earlier but then I didn't really feel uh, uh, like I managed to play well I think I played really well here Re results do not show it objectively I shouldn't have won the last game I should I deserve to be adopted but it was a very interesting match and so anyway bottom line uh, this was a match number 11 that I played in the adoption series I played these every week uh, this Sunday I'm playing a second match against uh, WGM Dina Belenkaya we already played one match and this this would be the second match and then after that uh, on the you know, the following the following Sunday meaning next Sunday Sunday the 20th I'm playing Grandmaster Anna Muzichuk and uh, Anna Muzichuk would be the strongest player I faced I fully expect to get adopted but I hope to have uh, you know chance better chance you know some chance or at least uh, show an honorable honorable defense um, anyway, I wanted to share this share this with you because uh, this is a game I wanted to show yesterday. I, on a regular schedule, instead Open Field Media had a match between Halfen uh, and uh, and I think uh, and International Grandmaster Halfen and uh, Grandmaster Morozovic. So I didn't want to counter program my thing. Um, the the strategy here for my preparation is basically to work more on my tactics and I agree with feed the trainer there's nothing we can root it's too extreme a miss but you know well-known tactics will be the most challenging when you said the chess in, later in life here's another thing I'm 52 and uh, you know I used to be very I'm pretty proficient in and fluent in several languages and I was able to learn a language fairly easily uh, when I was 14 when I was 15 when I was 16 um, you know un up until about 20 uh, uh, my late 20s then it became difficult and then it became a little bit harder so I'm looking forward to learning more from these matches I'm looking forward to practicing more and more of my tactics and I'm going to have another session of my best losses uh, in in two days. It's going to be on Thursday. I'm going to show a game I lost against Grandmaster Amar Hamilton in which uh, I had an opportunity to win the game is. Uh, uh, yeah, well, uh, thank you for the trainer. I would very, very much like to uh, the, you know, I would love to be able to uh, calculate as badly as Anatoly Karpov, but thank you. And hey, Mass Refuge. No, no, no. Look, uh, the, the purpose of this is for me to improve. And I'm feeling that I've, I've actually was hugely beneficial for my, my improvement. And uh, very honestly, in many ways, uh, these uh, strongest male and female play, uh, players, it's a huge benefit to us. It's, it's literally amazing that I'm able to do this. I remember way back when, before Twitch, before uh, before Internet Chess and everything, I I was able to play 
uh, to get a game against Grassmaster Jubovic back in 1990. And uh, for to get a place on that board, I had to play for, uh, for a chess team for, uh, for, I think, a year and a half. So ability to, uh, ability to do this and to play grandmasters on a regular basis is such a huge benefit and such unbelievable benefit all, you know, over 30 years ago that I'm still in awe that it's possible. And thank you, Fidel. That's very kind of you to come, come to you uh, for you to say it's, uh, you know, age is not a problem. Uh, le uh, learning is definitely taking slower. And thank you for the encouragement, Fidel. That's very greatly appreciated. It's very nice and very sweet of you. All right. So, uh, so next, my next stream will be on Thursday at 8 p.m. It's going to be uh, another edition of the series of my best losses Monday, which will be on Thursday because of the scheduling issue. And I'm looking forward to playing Dina Belenkaya on Saturday. Dina is threatening that she's going to come prepared, so I'm, I'm slightly worried. And obviously, in the background, there is Anna Muzichuk, but uh, for now, my focus on, uh, is on Dina, and I'll come prepared and ready, and I hope to put up a good fight. Anyway, uh, thank you, guys. Thank you for joining. Uh, thank, you, thank you for being here. Thank you for, thank you for, study. it's, uh, for the studies. I have, uh, we have reach 213 subscribers on the channel uh, we also have 19 uh, 1972 followers i have promised a subscription simul uh, and we give that a try at uh, when we reach 2000 followers so we'll i'm looking forward to seeing you guys again in in two days and thank you again and let's see the most important question is who should we raid let's see who is who is streaming chess or some okay. soundproofing Oops. and some uh sorry all right okay all right let's see all right you know what i have you know uh, Chiu is streaming the new event, which is uh, which is the CLG Chess Arena. CLG has apparently, which is a big esports thing, is, uh, has decided to uh, to sponsor a chess uh, chess event. So why? Okay, so let's see. So I'm gonna send you to Chiu. And I think we should support that. She's a, she's a great, she's a former world champion and everybody knows who she is. So why am I telling you? So I'm going to send you her way and say hello and give her a follow. Thank you, Sepper. Thank you for always being here. Thank you, Grandmaster Corrales. It's an honor to have you in my chat. And thank you, FidaTrainer.net. I am very much looking forward to uh, to to seeing you see more of you and thank you Sepper again and the raid is done thank you again guys it's good to see you bye